What's up guys, Readiness Rations here with you again. Today we're gonna to be checking out an international military ration. This is a Kingdom of Denmark Danish Defense 24 hour combat ration. Of course, this is the ration that the Danish military uses. It's a very interesting square box they come in. This is menu number 11, beef with mashed potatoes. On the outside of the box, there is a complete contents list. This ration comes in at a whopping 3,500 kcals. The packing date on that is the 20th day of August, 2019. This ration definitely has some heft to it. You can tell for sure it's gonna have a lot of food in it. Just very carefully open this up. I plan to reseal it and keep the box for display. All right, so right on top, we have an Ortho branded mashed potatoes with beef. This is a freeze-dried main entree. An Ortho tuna flakes and water, 50 grams, 21 grams of protein in that. Mackerel in tomato sauce, 50 grams with 12 grams of protein. A fruit muesli with raspberries. That sounds delicious. A very small 25 gram pack of dried cranberries, a pack of Nutwalker peanuts roasted and salted, 25 gram package of farmhouse pate. This package seems a little bit bulged. Hopefully that's still okay. A 25 gram package of Brussels pate, two packages of Andros brand mixed berry jam or marmalade, a strawberry banana fruit pocket, a protein bar toffee flavored, a 1.4 ounce package of peanut butter, a 25 gram chocolate bar, a 30 gram raw bite apple cinnamon fruit bar, a box of matches, a peach flavored sports drink, cocoa flavored beverage powder, lemon flavored sports drink, a 15 gram package of spicy sauce, a Bridgeford branded whole wheat bread, 57 grams, a package of raisins, a 47 gram package of whole grain biscuits with an expiration date of January 21st, 2022, another Bridgeford whole wheat bread, and we have an accessory package, a little bit of tape on that. They include this rather large Ziploc. That's appreciated. There's a lot you can do with that. In there, we have two spoons, and these spoons actually feel really high quality. Awesome. A toothbrush, three wet wipes, one of which is antibacterial, three pieces of V6 spearmint chewing gum, three packages of black pepper, three small packages of salt, two packages of sugar, an awesome three packages of Colombian freeze-dried coffee, two tea bags, and finally some individually wrapped toothpicks. So as always, when it's a 24-hour ration, I consume it as a 24-hour ration. So over the course of the day, this is all the food I will be consuming. Let's get it broken down into individual meals and get our breakfast going. All right, so we're getting it started with a pretty sizable breakfast. Let's get it going right away with our coffee. It's a very plain package this coffee comes in. It calls for 180 milliliters of boiling water, and the use-by is December 2021, so this still has a little bit of life left in it. Packed by Nutshell Packaging. They are large, freeze-dried coffee crystals. They smell basically like any old freeze-dried coffee, like some Taster's Choice or something like that. And they give you three of these, so you could double up and make a double coffee or even a triple coffee if you wanted to. I'm just going to start with the one. And they gave us two packages of sugar. I'm gonna use about half of one of these in this cup of coffee. That is smelling really, really good. And we have our Voyager Ortho branded fruit muesli with raspberries. Look at all that milk powder that's in this. Just looking through the dry mix here, there's some little blocks of something. Let's taste one of those. That's an awesome little chewy apple square. I need another one of those before we hydrate this. Hmm, fantastic. The instructions said add 100 milliliters of water. So let's add that to it. That's about 100 ml. I'm using warm water for this. I'm gonna give it a stir. Muesli's like this can be either eaten cold or hot, however you prefer it. I like mine warm. It makes more like an oatmeal. Let's seal that up. Give that a couple minutes to hydrate. While it's doing so, let's take a look at this bread. This is Bridge for Branded. Bridge for makes a lot of stuff for the US MREs. Their bread products usually aren't that great, but maybe being made for the European market, this will be a little bit better. They put a do not eat in there. I'm not gonna eat that. It smells like a US MRE wheat snack bread, and that's basically the super dense texture that it has as well. Let's break this in half. Uh, there's the break. We'll look at this apple cinnamon roll bite bar. Now that's looking good. Uh, right away I can tell you that it has almonds in it, and it's basically just a very simple fruit and nut bar. Surely that will be quite tasty. I need a sip of this coffee. So there was no creamer, it's just coffee and sugar. Mm. Now, it has a very distinct and strong bitterness. I would definitely consider this 
a bold coffee, sort of a dark roast kind of flavor. You certainly know you're drinking coffee with this one, that's for sure. It doesn't need the creamer. Even though it's a little bit bitter, it's still smooth. That sugar lightens it up a little bit. I think without the sugar, the bitterness would probably be overpowering. It's going down very quickly. One more little sip of that. That was good. That was a very solid ration coffee. Strong and bold. Quite nice. Now I'm hungry, so let's go in for this raw bite. Break that in half. In the inside, you can just see it's comprised of nuts and fruit, basically. Hmm. Very chewy. Slight bit of crunch. Perfect sweetness from that actual real dried fruit. There's no added sweeteners to this. That sweetness is just coming from the fruits, which is mainly comprised of dates and apples. It has a lot of almonds in it. You can see those right there. And there's also cashews in this. The cinnamon flavor is sort of in the background. It's not overwhelming at all. The closest analog you're going to find to this in the U.S. would be an apple cinnamon Laura bar. This is virtually identical. I think our muesli's probably had time to rehydrate. It's certainly thickened up in there. This package has some good heft to it. Of course, in the field, you just eat it out of the pouch. But for the video, I think we'll get it out onto the tray here. It is very thick with that amount of water that I added, but I like that. I much prefer it to be like this than soupy. We still got a little bit in the pouch that was plain hard to get, but the majority of it made it to the tray here. Let's get in close on this and see what we can see. So there's the little raspberry pieces. They're very small. There's no large pieces of raspberry in this. These little squares are dried apple and in their dried form, they were delicious. So I'm sure they're gonna be good rehydrated. And we can just see a basic cereal base, some oats, some wheat, and some rye. All right, let's get a spoonful of that thick, creamy awesomeness. There is an up close look at it down the hatch. That raspberry shines through. That was surprising. There's so little raspberry in this. I didn't think I'd be able to taste it, but I most certainly can get another big bite. This is definitely the kind of breakfast item you can eat in the morning and it sticks with you all day. Very filling and it's going to provide a ton of energy. When you get one of the little apple pieces, it's just like this mini little explosion of a sweet apple flavor. It was really fantastic. It's not overly sugary sweet, which I appreciate personally. The grains still have a little bit of bite to them. They haven't turned to mush, but all that milk powder has created an awesome creamy milky base. Pretty dang good stuff. Fruit pocket time. The expiration date on this was July 2021. These are the pinnacle of retort pouch technology. It is essentially a retort pouch, but it has a spout so you don't have to go digging in it. You just suck your food straight out of it. All right, we'll put some of this in the spoon. It's not very pretty. It's essentially baby food. Ooh, it's got some chunks in it. So towards the cap end, it was very dark. As you got into the inside, it was a little bit more light, but there are some odd dark chunks in there. Let's give this a smell. It smells like banana baby food, which as far as baby food goes, banana has always been my favorite. Well, let's give that a taste. Oh, heck yeah. Oh man, that is a flavor I have not experienced in ages. This is exactly like banana baby food. The strawberry is not what I'm tasting. I'm tasting all banana pretty much. No chewing required. It just goes down like a drink essentially. Some people might be put off a little bit by its baby food consistency, but I mean, it's meant to be like that. This is just quick on the go. Grab it and suck on it while you're marching kind of food for a quick, healthy energy boost. That was definitely satisfactory in my book. All right, finally over to the bread. I'm not very excited about this now that I've smelled of it. I mean, I'm thinking this is just going to be like USMRE wheat snack bread. But we got a piece of it there. Let's give it a taste. Yeah, it's better than a wheat snack bread in a USMRE, that's for sure. It tastes more natural. It's extremely dry, so it needs some help. As I was tearing into it, I did notice that these are pre-split to open up like a sandwich. So that's pretty cool. Very interesting packaging on this peanut butter. Let me squeeze some of that out on the spoon. Ooh, look how runny it is. It's like the expensive all natural peanut butter from the grocery store. It's all split and the oils need to be mixed into it. And yeah, that's exactly what this is like. It has almost no sweetness whatsoever. I wouldn't be surprised if there's no sugar added to this at all. Maybe just a little salt. And it's predominantly just straight up peanuts. You put a little bit on the bread. You don't see that in military rations. That's the good stuff. All right, get a bite of the bread and peanut butter together. Bread and peanut butter is a classic, but that zaps every bit of moisture from your mouth, that's for sure. Let's try out some of this Andros Mixed Berry Marmalade. Got some on the bread there. I need to try just a little bit of this marmalade by itself to break down what I'm getting from it. It has plant matter in it. You can see little bits of seeds and stuff. That's a good sign. Yeah, it just tastes kind of like a generic sweet fruity flavor. I can't really pick up on the individual fruits that are in there, but we know it has strawberry, blueberry, and raspberries in it. I think it will mix very well with the peanut butter on the bread, and it'll add some moisture for us. Mm. Oh yeah, that jam made it go down so much easier. And just say so we did it, put a little bit on our muesli here, just to pump up the sweetness and the berry flavor to a different level. That should be pretty good. It's not needed, this muesli is very good by itself, but if you do want some added sugar, that's a good way to go about getting it. They didn't include any toothpaste, so unfortunately, I won't be testing our toothbrush, but we will take a good look at it. So these bristles are quite stiff, I would say that is a Firm bristle, not a medium. It's very thin plastic and pretty pliable. So this is gonna be just a 
one or two time use toothbrush. There is one of these included in every one of these rations. So if the soldiers are using these rations for several days, they're gonna have quite a few of these saved up. But the addition of a toothbrush is really outstanding. I guess you just have to bring your own toothpaste. Breakfast was pretty fantastic. Let's clean up with one of our wet naps. It's made from a flimsy paper material like that of a USMRE wet nap. Very wet though. Virtually no smell. So pretty standard stuff there. Not bad if a little bit weak. I'll finish the rest of this up and we'll be right back at you with lunch. It has been several hours. That breakfast was very hearty and kept me quite full up until this point, but I finally worked up enough of an appetite for us to not lunch out. I saved just a little piece of bread from breakfast. Let's start out with that tea. Seems to be a simple black tea. There's a look at our little tea bag. It smells very floral, actually. I have about six ounces of hot water measured out. That's usually what I go with for a cup of tea. Give that a few minutes to steep. Let's do our other drink too. This is the peach flavored sports drink. This package is supposed to contain enough powder for 500 milliliters of water. The color of the powder is slightly pink, just very slightly though, and the smell is very pungently peach. I'm using cold water for this. Look at that lovely peachy color and the aroma is very strong once the water was added. My whole room smells all peachy. Open up this protein bar. Looks a little squished. It's toffee flavored. Very interesting. Not sure how it got squished in a box, but I guess things happen. Has sort of a caramelly-like toffee smell going on. Seems to be very gooey. Pull these biscuits out. They're called whole grain biscuits and they were not joking. Look at these things. They're basically granola bars. They're so whole grain. Check that out. They're super coarse and rough, almost like mm, a dry sandpaper biscuit. They don't really smell like much, just a very plain grain type smell. And for their size, they're relatively light. Look at the raisins. They look like golden raisins. Yeah, check out the coloration. Those are definitely not regular raisins and are extremely tightly vacuum sealed Nut Walker roasted and salted peanuts. Those were under vacuum and they're very large peanuts and just smell like peanuts. Not too bad. Canned mackerel can have a very strong flavor. That's one of the reasons that you'll commonly see it canned in tomato sauce because that kind of cuts down on that fishiness a little bit. A lot of people don't like mackerel and it's not my favorite canned fish, but yeah, I find it tolerable. Fishy aroma blasted me right away. There's not very much in the package. These are very small packages of fish. Seems to have a greasy, slick to it. Mackerel is a very high fat fish, so not surprising. It's a little oily looking. It's quite a small little portion. Really as far as the food goes and the lunch portion, the thing I was most excited to try out were these pâtés. I just hope they're still edible because they do seem to be a little bit bulged. Take a look at the farmhouse first. A little bit of darkening around the edges, but that's pretty common for pâtés. It smells absolutely perfect. Slight liver smell to it and our Brussels. Looks virtually identical, same story, a little bit of darkening around the edges and an equally pleasant smell to that. I usually don't start with drinks, but I gotta try out this peach drink. Nice and chilled, filled all the way to the rim of the glass. Let's give that a taste. Oh yes, that is very sweet and absolutely deliciously peach. Wow. It's like I'm drinking straight up peach juice. This is amazing. It doesn't taste weird and artificial. It seems to be naturally sweetened with real sugar. No harsh bite to it. No weird aftertaste. Just pungent, sweet, delicious, ripe peach flavor. And I'm from Georgia, so trust me, I know peaches. That might be the best drink I've ever had in a ration. No joking. Awesome. All right, well, the mackerel's kind of staring me in the face. It's such a small portion. Guess we should dig into it. Other than it being suspended in a very orange tomato sauce and being a little bit oily, there's not really much to look at. It's just straight fish and sauce. Well, let's give that a taste. Mm, distinctly fishy. Some people are offended by something as simple as tuna. This is like tuna on steroids. It's like if you multiply the fishy flavor of tuna by like a factor of 10. That's basically what you have with mackerel. The texture on this is outstanding. It's very soft, but at the same time, you can still pick up on the individual fish flakes. The sauce that this is in is very mild. It's a little bit sweet. There's no spiciness. I think it does cut through some of that intense mackerel flavor. It's the texture that I really like though. Tuna can tend to get a little bit dry sometimes. This is not dry at all. It's very moist. And even when eating it, it stayed moist the whole time. I think that it is calling for a little bit of black pepper though. And maybe that'll pump it up just a little bit. Yeah. That little pepper addition is definitely what that needed. I'm just disappointed that the portion's so small. I can eat a whole tray of that. Check out one of our whole grain biscuits. Give that a snap. They are very crunchy and there's something 
to do with the sound of these. I don't know. They kind of remind me of like a scouring pad or a scotch Brite pad or something like that. They're very light and airy. Virtually no smell. Very crunchy. A little bit airy. I see why the expiration date was so good on these. There's nothing in them. They're just dried grain packed into like a little bar. Very neutral flavor. Has sort of a whole grain nuttiness to it. It's not bad. Should mix pretty well with the fish here. And it does. The crunchiness is a very nice pairing for the fish. I'm actually going to go in for another one of those. Load this one up. One more bite of that. Oh yeah, I like that. And oddly enough, that's not thirst provoking. It went down very easily. I'm fairly impressed with that combo. Our tea's been steeping pretty good. Tried just a little bit with no sugar. Uh, very plain, completely unoffensive black tea. A little bit of sugar and a taste with it sweetened. I always like a little bit of sugar with my tea. Something about it just like turns up all the flavors. It's not just adding sweetness. It awakens dormant flavors within the tea leaves themselves. And it just becomes so much more drinkable to me. As far as tea goes, this is pretty standard stuff. Nothing amazing, but completely satisfying. And I finished that one up. Pate time. We'll start with our Brussels. Get in there and scoop that out. Super easy to cut with a spoon. It looks to be very pasty, finely blended. Mm. It instantly disperses all over the mouth. It's just so creamy and buttery. It just kind of disappears when you eat it. It does have a distinct irony flavor coming from the liver that's in this. If you're a fan of pâtés, this is one of the best I've had. It leaves sort of a fatty film in the mouth. Well, I'm not complaining about it, it's fine. It's just a little bit unusual. There's just a slight oniony undertone to this. Pretty good though. Try some of that on our biscuit. I know that's gonna be good. Mm -hmm. I could have actually put twice that much pâté on that bite. This pâté is really good, but it's light in flavor. And even something as neutral as that biscuit kind of overpowers it a little bit. Let's do the same thing, but this time on some of our whole wheat bread. We'll get a bigger bite this time and spread that on the bread and try that one out. It makes the bread a heck of a lot better. I almost think the pate is just better by itself. All right, let's try out our farmhouse. This farmhouse seems to be a bit more substantial and not quite as creamy. Looks pretty good though. Let's give that a taste. Oh yeah, it has larger pieces of meat in it. You can tell that for sure. This is not nearly as livery tasting as the other one. And you can actually pick up on pieces of pork meat in this, which I really like. It's not blended to a level that the other one was, and it has virtually no liver flavor compared to the other one especially. Put a bit of that on our biscuit. Dang good mixture. But again, the pate is a little bit outshined by the biscuit as far as the flavor goes. A little bit surprising because this biscuit seems so neutral, but I guess I just need to put more pate on the bite to really get a good hit of it. And we'll try one bite of that on our snack bread. I like these biscuits more than I like the snack bread, but I think if you have to put your pate on something, the bread is the way to go because the pate flavor comes through a little bit stronger that way. Those are excellent though. I don't recall having a pate that's better than either of those. That's probably the best I've encountered so far. One more sip of this delicious peach nectar. Oh. It's not even fair that like I'm never gonna be able to have this again. I hate that. That's just the juice of the gods. All right, let's try a couple of roasted salted nuts from Nutwalker. They're very large peanuts. They don't appear to be super overly salted. Give this a taste. Perfectly roasted, very deep nuttiness, but they're peanuts. I mean, what are you gonna do? Peanuts are sort of peanuts, right? Pretty much always good. And in rations, they last forever. Now these raisins, they're a little bit different than what I'm used to. You can tell for sure they're golden raisins. They're very light in color. They have no weird coating on them like USMRE raisins do. They seem to be very dry. They smell quite raisiny. Oh yeah, sweet, very sweet. A slight tartness, which is not something I would normally associate with raisins. Them being golden raisins might have something to do with that. Maybe it has a little bit more acidity. If you like raisins, you'll like them. If you don't like raisins, you won't. And I happen to be a raisin fan. And the last thing, our protein bar, toffee flavored. Man, that seems to be very chewy. We'll see if we can kind of pull that apart. Oh yeah, that's gonna be some serious chew going on. It is coated in like this sort of chocolate-like coating. This doing a tiger stripe thing as I'm pulling it apart. Let's just go in for a bite of that. I can actually taste it before it entered my mouth. The smell's pretty strong. It certainly has sort of a caramel-like toffee flavor going on with just a little hint of something different. It has sort of a chicory type flavor to it, but very light. Almost like a super cheap instant coffee that consists of chicory. It has a little bit of that flavor. It takes a while to chew up. Not something I would go out and buy by itself, but it's a decent a little addition to the ration and a solid little source of protein for the troops. That was a dang good lunch. But the star of the show was the drink. Never had anything like it and doubt I ever will again. Well, I'm going to pack the rest of this down my throat hole and we'll be back shortly with dinner. Well, all right, let's get into dinner. We have our main for the ration, mashed potatoes with beef. 
It's gonna take a while for this to rehydrate, so I say we go ahead and get it knocked out. It looks like the majority is potato flakes. You can always see some flakes of uh, herbs in there, maybe some parsley or something of that nature. And the pieces of beef are freeze dried and they are quite small. Let's try one of those by itself. Nice beefy flavor but nothing too special. This calls for a whopping 440 milliliters of boiling water. That seems like a lot, but potato flakes usually soak up as much water as you can put in them. I think I'll add most of it, but not all of it. Let's see, I've reserved about 100 mils here. Oh boy, that's hot. Oh man, the smells coming off this is outrageous. It's wafting this rich mashed potato aroma, and it's really thickening up. It might need that extra water after all. I'm gonna really get in there and stir it vigorously. This pouch is resealable, so we're gonna zip the Ziploc on it, fold that over, and as dangerous and uncomfortable as this may be, we're gonna give it a shake. Oh, that is so hot. <laughs> I'm burning the crap out of myself. It's worth it if it mixes a little better. So we'll give it the eight minutes. Let's check out our cocoa flavored beverage powder. That calls for 200 milliliters of hot water. Ooh, that smells rich and delicious. The powder looks fantastic in the glass. It would probably be really nice to add a coffee to this, but it's a little bit later now and I don't really need the caffeine. About the only time I ever have hot chocolate is in rations, but I always look forward to it. It's something I sleep on in day-to-day -day life. I'm never like, hey, let's have a hot chocolate, but whenever I run across one in a ration, it makes my day just a little bit better. That is smelling nice. And we'll prepare our other drink mix. This is our lemon flavored sports drink. The powder is completely white. Just like the previous drink we had with lunch, this is a 500 milliliter drink. The glass I use for these reviews is just shy of 500 mils, but I think that usually mixes an overall better drink. It's just a little bit stronger than it would be otherwise. If that's even one tenth as good as the peach drink, I'll be happy with it. This Orfo chocolate bar is in sort of a shiny packaging. Oh, it looks like to be in perfect shape. Look at that. No oxidation or blooming of any kind, and it smells absolutely heavenly. I did have a couple biscuits left over from lunch. We'll be checking those out with the rest of the meal. Take a look at these cranberries. They both look and smell about like a USMRE cranberry. Not a very big portion. I think the play with these is to actually take the cranberries and then the raisins and the peanuts that we have for lunch and mix those all together for like a little trail mix. That'd probably be the way to go and give you some good variation and texture and sweet and savory. I did have one more whole wheat bread. Let's see if this one was split like the other one was, and it is. Perfectly splits in two for sandwiches or whatever you wanna do with it. And lastly, our tuna flakes and water. Nothing in this ration has really required a knife so far. That smells like tuna. These fish pouches are big enough for a decent little snack, but not enough to make a meal of itself. I suppose you could mix both the fish together and sort of slather it on one of those wheat bread pieces and make sort of a fish sandwich. That'd probably be pretty decent. All right, something that I didn't get to try earlier in the day was this Andros jam or marmalade directly on one of these biscuits. So let's try that out. This one's darker. Yeah, this one is definitely different. This is black currant and this jam is freaking awesome and even better on that biscuit. This stuff is so good, I can eat it straight out of the package. That black currant adds a tanginess that the other jam that we had didn't have. The black currant is such a unique flavor that we don't really get very much here in the US because for whatever reason, black currant products have some weird legal things surrounding them. Get a sip of our lemon drink to wash that down. Okay, well, it's a lot better than I thought it would be. It's along the lines of the peach in that it's not offensive. It comes off very natural. It doesn't have any of that sharp artificial bite that you'll get with like a country time lemonade or something like that. Very natural lemon flavor. Tastes a lot better than it smells. I must say I'm a fan. If we've given our main the eight minutes plus some, wow, that is a gigantic portion. Still super hot. Looks like you didn't mix the best. We still got some crunchy bits. They are not playing with the portion for this main meal. Holy crap. All right, so there's still quite a bit left over in the bag that you can go through and scrape off, and I will no doubt do that after the video. But for now, my tray compartment here is basically full anyway. I need to mix in a little bit of these flakes that didn't hydrate very well. It's looking like it could have used even more water than what they called for. You could probably put 500 milliliters in this and been fine. The smell is intoxicatingly savory. I just want to dig into it seriously. I'm completely expecting some of those meat pieces to not be fully rehydrated and to be a little bit crunchy, but nothing wrong with that. All right, so let's see what we can see. So of course it's predominantly 
the mashed potato. It has a generous amount of these little meat pieces though. They're all distributed throughout the mash pretty evenly. And then it has little flakes of some type of herb. There's some rosemary. I can definitely tell that that's rosemary. It has something that's a little bit more leafy, like a parsley or something like that. The smell coming off this is pungently potato with a little bit of an oniony tone to it. It's super thick and hearty. It's just sort of sticking to the spoon. So let's give that a taste. Oh man, that is a revelation. Wow. It's so simple, but it is so good. That's one of the best mains I've ever had in any ration, period. I need another bite of that. It is so home cooked tasting. Those potatoes don't taste like artificial potato flakes at all. It's perfectly creamy, luxuriously savory. The portion size, as you can tell, is humongous. There's no way you're going away from this meal hungry. This is comfort food to the max. Try a little piece of meat by itself as close to by itself as we can get it at least. The meat is kind of hard to pick up on by itself. Its flavor is so evenly distributed throughout the mash. It kind of just all has that beefiness already. The only herb I can taste just a little bit is rosemary. There's not much else in this as far as herbaceous flavors go. You can certainly tell there's some onion in here. Man, this stuff is delicious. I don't know, I just usually don't expect something so extremely hearty in a ration like this. It truly is delicious. I've been eyeballing this spicy sauce all day. We haven't had anything so far that it would go on. And even now, it doesn't fit perfectly, but I need to try some of this stuff. It looks like a picante style salsa almost. Very blended. It does have some flakes of pepper in it. Let's give that a taste. Mm. Oh yeah, that stuff is good. It's very vinegary. It has a nice punch of spice, but nothing overwhelming. It has a nice little garlic undertone to it. This might be the best tasting hot sauce I've ran into in a ration. Hot Diggity Dog from the British RPs is the spiciest. This is the best tasting, I think, from what I've had at least. You put a little bit on this bite. Now, mashed potatoes and hot sauce aren't really a classic combo, but this spicy sauce is so good, I think you could eat it on basically anything. Mm -hmm. The tangy vinegar flavor that this has actually pairs fairly well with the mashed potatoes. Let's taste a little bit of this tuna. It's essentially just canned tuna, so everybody's had this before. As I suspected, it's just straight up canned tuna. Nothing wrong with that. I think the play on this tuna is to make a tuna sandwich. I think we're gonna make a half sandwich, sort of an open-faced thing here. And then who doesn't like a spicy tuna sandwich? Put a healthy amount of spicy sauce on there. I think this is where I'm gonna use the majority of it. Now that looks pretty decent. Oh yeah, it doesn't need any salt. The moisture from the tuna helps the bread go down easier. And that spicy sauce is just absolutely excellent. It helps the whole thing out. That spicy sauce, it makes it, man. That stuff is good. It's the perfect balance of heat and flavor where pretty much everyone would be able to eat it and enjoy it. Good to the last bite. This portion for the main is just so freaking huge. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to finish it off. I rarely run into a situation where it's too much food for me to eat, but I might've got myself into one of those situations this time. I think it's hot chocolate time. Give that a quick stir and a taste. Oh, that is fantastic. Are you kidding me? It is sweet, it is chocolatey. You can tell the base is a dark chocolate. It has such a creamy feel in the mouth. It's outstanding. Simply as good as any hot chocolate out there. One last sip. I'm getting full. I think this is the most full I've ever been for a ration. I'm like full to my eyeballs already almost. Try out a couple cranberries. They're a little bit dark. I did look on the ingredients in this and they added additional sugar to it. It has cane sugar, so these should be nice and sweet. Chewy, sweet, tangy, everything you would want in a cranberry. The portion's small enough to where it's not overwhelming to eat. Good stuff. Never too full for chocolate. Let's give this bar a crack. Oh, hear that snap? Look at that dark chocolate cross section. These are looking good. Give that a taste. Very snappy and crunchy. It's on the darker side. Seems to be about a 60 or 70% cocoa. It's not overly sweet. It's melting really well in the mouth. I don't think it's the best I've encountered, but it's most certainly not the worst. And chocolate is always good. Well, let's strike a match because this ration was lit. It struck easily and also went out easily. We'll do the antibacterial wipe. This one's a little different from the other one. Good way to clean up after dinner. But being antibacterial, I think you would probably use this before dinner. No scent on this one either but nice and wet. I actually have some cranberries stuck in my tooth, so I think we will use this toothpick. As gross as that may be, I was not lying. That is cranberry. These are unflavored toothpicks. You know, sometimes toothpicks will have a little minty flavor to them. And the last thing to try, our V6 sugar-free white spearmint. Feels to be two briquettes in each one of these packs. Buy one of these in half. Nice candy shell on the outside. I've had this V6 gum before. It doesn't get much better. Well, guys, that was the Kingdom of Denmark Danish Defense 
24 hour combat ration and wow what an experience a mountain of food surely fit to feed any soldier on planet earth for a 24 hour period everything was very high quality and quite tasty that's the most expensive ration i've done on the channel to date if you like this video please hit that subscribe button so that way you can see more videos like this in the future i will have more coming if you know someone else that might enjoy this review share it because that really helps the channel grow and don't forget to hit that thumbs up button because that helps me out with the google algorithm getting the video out to other viewers let me know what you thought about this ration down in the comments is there anything that you would have done differently as far as mixing things together i'll probably have to have a second dinner in about an hour or so to finish the rest of this off thanks again for watching guys i truly appreciate it and i will catch you in the next video see you then peace